What is up, everybody? Welcome to the second episode of the Gentlemen of the Corax podcast, where we talk about all these cool shark-related things. And we have a really special episode for you guys, a Marine March Madness 2024 edition. So we have some special guests here. Let's go around and just introduce yourselves. Firstly, I'm Ben Good. I am the owner of OnPointFossils.com as well as the host of this channel, Elasmocast. And yeah, let's go around. David, uh, let's hear a little bit about you. Hi, guys. My name is David Hoppy, uh, also known as Hoppy Hunting is my alias. Here's uh, my logo. And I have a YouTube channel under Hoppy Hunting and Instagram as well. I post my shark tooth collecting. I also find whale bones, which is kind of my forte. Um, I study fossil cetaceans, so whales, dolphins, and porpoises. I'm currently going to grad school to get my master's, studying un under uh, Dr. Mark Ewan. Um, and he's one of the world's leading experts in fossil whales. And so I'm the whale guy. I'll definitely be giving my opinion on our, our whale competitors for the day. Um, but yeah, I'm located in Virginia, Northern Virginia, just outside of D.C., and just uh, happy to be here. Awesome. Cool. Uh, what's up, guys? I'm Jared Cook. I'm a science communicator on TikTok and Instagram, Jared.Cook and Jacob Paleo are my usernames. And uh, apart from that, I'm an undergrad at Texas A&M. I mostly focus on marine reptiles. For the most part within that, I focus on mosasaurs. I don't really know that much about plesiosaurs, but I found some cool plesiosaur material before. And uh, yeah, I'm participating in some research describing uh, most source species with Michael J. Polson up at SMU. So um, yeah, there's going to be some cool most source stuff in the books. And I also have strong opinions about this. So I'm looking forward to granting y'all with them. <laughs> uh, my name is Chase Egley. Uh, I am a grad student at the University of Alabama, um, studying both structural geology, completely unrelated, uh, and shark paleoichthyology um you can follow me on ResearchGate. that'd be fun i'd appreciate it <laughs> go check out some of the work i've done um yeah that's all i've got all right hey everyone uh my name is kyle i run nj fossils on instagram tiktok and uh youtube um i'm more of an invertebrate guy so i don't get a whole lot of uh say here i i pushed for an invert to be added to the list but it wasn't a real serious request um other than that i like to focus on the cretaceous so i'll probably be pushing hard for our uh, cretaceous competitors so we got some biases here i see yeah very clear and loudly announced <laughs> so before we get started this is going to be a march manis style bracket competition we're basically going to be pitting these marine organisms from all throughout deep time up against each other. They may or may not have ever met before. And this is, you know, a lighthearted comparison. Yeah, we're going to add some signs to it, but, you know, don't scrutinize us for this hypothetical fantasy type of, of thing we're going to be doing. And we set some ground rules too. So some of these organisms, they hunt in, say, pods, for example. But we're limiting this to just an individual animal versus individual animal, because that's only fair, especially with our extinct animals that we don't know for certain how they necessarily hunted. And we're going to be doing this as a majority vote. So there's five of us. So the one with the highest votes moves on to the next round. And eventually we'll see who is the kings of the Earth's oceans. You guys ready to get started? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Awesome. Here we go. So we got the colossal squid versus the killer whale. So what are your thoughts on, on who would reign supreme in this fight? I think first you should pronounce the genus name for us, please. <laughs> I, I give you the honors, Chase. <laughs> Absolutely not. Mazani Katuthis. No. I'm, I'll give it a shot. I think it's Mesonychotuthis. Mesonychotuthis. Mesonychotuthis is how I True, yeah. That. The Latin words, they really have uh, unusual vowels. You really have to harp on the yeah. vowels really hard. Absolutely. Uh, well, this is an interesting one because it's 
very close to being an actual matchup that we see in the modern ocean, right? The colossal squid actually is constantly uh, at arms with the sperm whale, not a killer whale, but it, you know, they're both odonocetes. They're both very large toothed predators, the, probably the two largest toothed predators in our modern oceans. So it's close to being a real matchup that happens all the time. It's probably happening as we speak. Um, and given that, you know, we consider the orca to be the true apex predator of the modern ocean, um, even more so than you would a sperm whale, I think it's only fair to say that because sperm whales come out on top in this actual matchup all the time, I think an orca just would clearly destroy a colossal squid. Yeah, uh, that's that's just kind of my opinion on that. But yeah, and you know, high, highly intelligent uh, predator. And of course, we said, you know, they're not hunting in pods, but even just a one on one here, I, I can't really see any scenario where a, a squid's going to take down an orca, even just a single orca. Yeah. And the colossal squid is the largest invertebrate alive today by mass. But at the same time, it's it's topping at at least as far as we've recorded around like 1100 pounds, whereas orcas are much, much heavier than that. And mm -hmm. while orcas are much smaller than how sperm whales top out. And for the, these comparisons, we're going on like exceptionally large but realistic individuals against each other because i feel like that's only fair with these competitions mm -hmm. but orcas they are very intelligent and squids are intelligent too but i don't see them rivaling something like an orca so i think the orca has the upper hand in almost everything dude poor kyle yeah. right now dude our single invertebrate is just getting oh, no. absolutely <laughs> <shredded>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you also just consider the weaponry that each one has, right? You've got a, a little beak, like what's that really going to do to an orca? Not a whole lot. But then you have a mouthful of razor sharp teeth, that's just going to shred a soft bodied squid to pieces. So and, I think and it's uh, on top of that, on top of that, correct me if I'm wrong, David, uh, apparently modern sperm whales, their teeth, some folks say they're vestigial. For the most part, they're suction feeders, and you get like barnacles on their teeth and stuff. So if they can do that to giant squid, uh, orca tooth is, if they can do that to giant squid already without problems like dude yeah it's oh, not yeah. Even a competition all pretty much all odonocetes use suction feeding to an extent even if they do actually you know utilize their teeth for feeding um you can observe orcas there's i mean there's videos actually online you can see orcas using some suction feeding just to get the food into their mouth and it's, it's really cool to see um so orcas do it too yeah sperm whales do it um and yeah i just think it would be a, a quick and uh, hopefully fast ending for the, that squid. We want to, you know, give him a, a, <laughs> a quick death. We need but to, like, I, I don't think it would last very long. In MS Paint mm -hmm. or something. So people have visual <laughs> aids. Just like, just Can like, you guys animate? Squiggles. We need, like, to make an animated battle for each of these. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so the only, the only <laughs> saving grace for the squid that it would be able to do, I think, in confrontation would be to drown the orca. Mm. But... I don't see that being a likely scenario if they were to meet. And yeah. squids, especially the colossal squid, that I believe is primarily an ambush predator, whereas the orca just has speed, it has power, it mm -hmm. has strength. And do you think mm -hmm. that the colossal squid would be able to ambush an orca feasibly? No. And no. even if it did, I, I just don't think it's strong enough to hold an orca down. Like it could wrap itself around the orca, sure, but I think it's not going to be able to, you know, be strong enough to restrain it to where it wouldn't be able to surface again. So, yeah, yeah, I think the only chance that the giant squid really has is like a home field advantage type thing where like if mm. it, it just stays in like the deep ocean, like yeah. the deep parts the of the orca ocean. Won't get to it sure <laughs> yeah it could just yeah. like stalemate it <laughs> don't well, underestimate that, the diving capabilities of odonocetes though you know they they are champion divers um so now that's another thing to consider though that's a good point um are we kind of operating under the assumption that this is taking place just like kind of in you know the top of the water column like just you know just beneath the surface or is it like assume it's like as far as the ocean goes like a vacuum like it doesn't really yeah. okay like we're not it's taking just in water that into account because that's not really sure. Fair. All right. It, so for our concerns, it's taking place in a giant swimming pool. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. So there goes. I like okay. I like the fact that we should remember though that some of these animals can drown. So if it's put against something that can't drown, that's like yeah. when point. we get to bigger stuff and the competition's mm -hmm. less obvious, that's a good mm -hmm. thing to remember. Yeah, yeah. that's yep, yeah, it's a good point. So right. I'm gonna pitch my vote to the orca. Yeah, same. I, I think this is unanimous. I think the orca has all five orca. votes. Yep. Okay. I was willing to come on here and say that if orcas could dive that deep, which I that's me assuming they can't, they would definitely be hunting colossal squid without a doubt. And from thought. what I read, there is a possibility that they would hunt juvenile or subadult, but I haven't heard of them going up against a full grown colossal squid, mm -hmm. at least as an indiv on an individual basis. I feel like that would be more risky than what an orca would like to take yeah i was thinking yeah. um it makes you kind of wonder with the rules i mean we are like essentially forcing them to fight because yeah. there are some yeah. matchups in this that an orca whale is smart enough simply to not take yeah so yeah. Let's imagine we just pump them with like rage drugs and they're gonna fight regardless. <laughs> this is just yeah. this is inevitable. It's bound to happen. Last man I'm like Roger Clemens level of roids. Yeah. <laughs> now this next matchup is one that Jared will really like. We have right. Mosasaurus Hoffmani versus Talosaurus Pro Riger. Or am I saying that right? Most folks say pro rigger. I say pro riger. Um, because mm -hmm. again, Latin words they they like a flat I, but most people say pro rigger, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Gotcha. Okay, so I have opinions about this. Um, if anybody listening to this or if any of y'all don't remember, Mosaurus Hoffmani, that's the one in prehistoric planet. Uh it's a Maastrichtian animal, late Maastrichtian. So this is a contemporary with uh like T-Rex, for example, the stereotypical name Maastrichtian animal. And then Tylosaurus Pro Rigger. This is a Campanian animal. So it's the stage before the Maastrichtian, still the late Cretaceous. But um, we're talking a something that's, you know, 76 million years old, as opposed to Mosasaurus Hoffmani, which, you know, 67 million years old. So, again, there's a big age range. They probably did not fight each other for that reason. But the thing is, Mosasaurs did fight all the time, all the time. There have been tons of skulls found with, like, smashed teeth inside of them. So I think there'll be an advantage with Mosasaurs in general coming on later. But uh, some of the things to consider is that Mosasaurs Hoffmani, it's a very derived animal. They're very efficient swimmers. Um, they they may, maybe, I don't know, this is a controversial, controversial opinion. They may have had a dorsal fin, a small one, because there were other Mosasaurians at the time that did. But Talosaurus Pro Rigger probably didn't. Um, with all that in mind, they're roughly the same size. So some folks have extrapolated from Dale Russell's 1967 monograph that Mosasaurus Hoffmani could reach, you know, 58 feet in length. Some further research has put them in the 40-something foot range. Talosaurus Pro Rigger, also 40 foot range. So you'd think it's a toss-up. However, I don't think it's... I, I think it'll be close, but I'm going to give... Talus first program the advantage simply because they have a big bony knob in the front of their face and this bony knob can act as a concentrated force to just you know ram into animals these are very muscular creatures as was most source half my most source half money probably also rammed animals but not to the same effectiveness as t pro rigger could and you know like we see orcas orcas ram great whites and they just absolutely tank them that way now imagine if you had something that just had a stronger bony rostrum that's meant like specifically for that that can move at equal speeds and it's more concentrated i think if t pro rigger gets the jump on most first half of night it would be game over and uh probably t pro rigger has that advantage yeah i was gonna say basically the same thing like tylosaurus has a more robust cranial elements than Mosasaurus Hoffmani. And I was sort of thinking the same thing that like Orca style, it could if it had enough speed and enough of a jump on Mosasaurus, it'll win sort of like the war of attrition if it comes down to that, just because of those more robust skull elements. Yeah. And it'd probably still be living in a stretcher. Like 
I, it'd yeah, be like, really close. I think this is one of those battles where, like, after it's over, they both die. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not really convinced that one makes it out, like, walking into the next round. Yeah. But for the purposes, it does. And Jared, what are these Mosasaurs most closely related to as far as, like, modern-day animals? So you're putting me into the one of the most controversial arguments in Mosasaur research. There are two very well-defined teams who are at odds with each other here. Think of the classic, like, is Nanotyrannus legitimate versus is it a juvenile T-Rex argument that everyone's arguing about or like a Spinosaurus aquatic or not? This is the Mosasaur version of that. It's what are they closely related to? You have a hypothesis that they're more closely related to snakes. This is assuming Pythonomorpha is, you know, a valid taxonomic grouping. And then you have the hypothesis that they're more closely related to monitor lizards. And um, the research that I've seen that debunks Pythonomorpha uh, would definitely point us to Mosasaurus being more closely related to monitor lizards, monitor lizards in my opinion. Um, it's a more robust conclusion. It seems to be more careful. Um, but again, some people would die on the hill that they're more related to snakes. Not my opinion, though. I think it's I think it's definitely monitor lizards that they're closer to. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's what I've always heard. I didn't even know about the the snake camp. That's very interesting. I did not know that. I thought yeah, it was kind of either. more kind of a set in stone idea that they were you know related to varanids. Yeah, and I think it's like but... kind of silly. A little bit, you know, if you if you really think yeah. about it, if you look at them, it's like, come on, bro. Like, what do you think? I mean, I know they, you know, they had that, like, I think it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but like anguilliform locomotion where they, you know, swivel their whole body. And that oh. is similar to like sea snakes. But that seems, you know, that's superficial. I don't, I don't see if it there's... used to be. It used to be thought that that's how they did it until um, there were some specimens found with, you know, proper tail fins. So they mm -hmm. had. A fin more like a shark well the derived ones did at least had fins more like a shark so that they could pro propel themselves very quickly so were they swimming like snakes maybe some of the early ones mm. uh that didn't have those fins developed yet but for the most part no they were they were powerful swimmers okay yeah so what are we thinking about between these two uh before i make a decision on this one i, I want to know one more thing um so they're similar in size, you said, at least yeah. our, our current size estimates. As far as the like proportions of them go, though, I I feel like I've seen Mosasaurus kind of reconstructed with a proportionally larger head. Would you say that's accurate? Does, did Mosasaurus have like a larger head to the rest of its body ratio than Tylosaurus did? Or is that just a misconception? To be honest, I'm not quite sure. I've never I've never looked into that, but I'm gonna guess they're pretty similar. If you look at if you okay. look at their um, if you look at their skeletons, there's not much that's gonna stand out that can like where one's obviously bigger than the other one, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. I have been in the presence of Tylosaurus skulls that are like four feet long or more. Um, they can mm -hmm. get really really big, as can Mosasaurus skulls. Um, I don't think. I don't think so. I, and you know what? There there have been some well-preserved Mosasaurus specimens found, but because they're such big animals, it's like the problem that you have with sauropods, for example. They're so big that it's kind of hard to get the entire thing fossilized. Mm. And uh, as far as I know, I don't think there's an adult Mosasaurus that's fossilized, you know, in its whole. There might be a Tylosaurus. Uh, there might be a couple of Tylosaurus specimens that are, but it's it's kind of hard to make that guess about how big the head is in proportion to the body. And that's why there's contention in the research, because, again, Dale Russell in his Mosasaur Bible that he wrote in 1967 um, said that it's going to be one eleventh of the body size. And we kind of ran on that for a while. Other researchers disagree. And um, yeah, so I don't think we're positive that we know those proportions. But again, I don't think they're going to be much different if I you know where to look in my library right now and figure that out another okay. thing to consider too is the environments that these animals lived in for example tylosaurus some of their competition so they they had other mosasaurs but they also like cretoxyrhina and cardabiodon and all of those that they had to kind of you know stay afloat 
and win over. Um, whereas Moses or Hoffman and I, at least in the shark realm, there wasn't the same, um, there wasn't the same level of macro predatory lomniforms that were at like the Cretaxi rhino level that they really had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's another advantage that Tylosaurus had just like living within the Western interior seaway when it did, it had a lot of rivalry. Well, to be fair, Mosasaurus, uh, Mosasaurus did too, because the rivalry that Mosasaurus faced in the Maastrichtian came from other Mosasaurs. Yeah. Like the Mosasaurs were ex extremely diverse in the Maastrichtian and uh, they were eating each other. Like Bentiobasaurus Jacob's eye was recently described a few months ago from inside of a prognathodon. <laughs> so like they were eating each other all the time. Um, so in terms of competition, it might be similar. I think so. I think so. so we unfortunately lost um Kyle when our thing shut down. So uh we'll we'll keep him in our hearts though. He raged when the invert died. So <laughs> but, so let's vote on this. I'm giving Tylosaurus the slight advantage. Yeah, Jared sold me. I'll, I'll go with it. Yeah, I have strong opinions. <laughs> All right. It's mm -hmm. not gonna matter, but I'm gonna go Mosasaurus Hoff and I. All right. right. Good to have a little bit of difference. So we have Tylosaurus for the win. Funny. That's going to be a fun matchup next. Oh, wow. Okay. It is. They have like the same. Oh, I just like demolished my computer. They have like the same advantages. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So our next matchup is going to be one that David would find interesting. We have Basilosaurus, Cetoides, mm -hmm. and Leviathan Melvili. So yes. these are two ancient whales, and you're the whale guy. So why don't you walk through what you sure. think? Sure. So Basilosaurus is from a, a family of archaeocetes. So these are the ancient whales that don't belong to the two major subdivisions we have today, which are, of course, the baleen whales and toothed whales. Um, and so these are ancestral whales, and they lived in the uh, late early Eocene. And so this is, we're talking on the order of about 40 uh, million years ago. Um, and so these guys were kind of the first whales to get large um, because prior to this, right, the, the terrestrial ancestors of whales were roughly wolf sized. Um, so not very big animals, but, as, you know, as they got in the water and became more and more aquatic, they started to become a little larger. And the basilosaurids, this family of archaeocetes, is where we start to see uh, the first really large animals. Um, things like basilosaurus could get up to, we think, about 60 feet in length. Um, so this is a very long, large animal. Um, and it, I should note that basilosaurus isis, which is the other uh, species of, of basilosaurus is actually has the uh, strongest calculated bite force of I think any mammal ever I th mm -hmm. might be wrong but I they did a, a study back in I think like the early 2000s where they calculated uh, bite force mm -hmm. for a basilosaurus isis and it was like one of the strongest I think it was strongest mammal that don't quote me on that but uh, it was uh, re point is ridiculously strong bite force. That being said, um, Leviathan is kind of on the other end of whale evolution where it's not a super old um, form. This is a relatively recent uh, taxon. Of course, it's, it is extinct. It's not around today, but it's essentially what you would get if you took a sperm whale, uh, gave it teeth in both of its jaws, not just the lower jaw, and made those teeth about three times the diameter <laughs> these were just massive bone crushing teeth um that could get like to maybe like a foot long and they're just super thick around tons of cementum uh in those teeth and so they were just designed for crushing bones and we we think these these animals were feeding on other whales the small small baleen whales that were swimming around in uh those miocene seas and so it's a more recent animal probably lived you know i think from like five to eight million years old we're talking about a much more recent more derived if you want to use that word uh animal 
here. So, and another thing to consider is that just like Orca's Leviathan, of course, being a sperm whale, was an odonocete. It was a toothed whale. And so it has this massive bulbous head and this big old brain. And so it was probably a highly intelligent animal. And I think that would give it a major upper hand over Basilosaurus. I think Basilosaurus was certainly a formidable predator um, and for its time. And we know that it also fed on other whales. There's evidence of Basilosaurus eating um, Dorodon, which is another Basilosaurid whale, a smaller Basilosaurid. Um, but so two definitely, you know, top of the line predators here for their time. But being that Leviathan is an Odonocete and would probably have that intelligence advantage and that it's just so bulky and has those massive uh, just bone crushing teeth, I think just one or two blows from those teeth might be enough to, to take out the Basilosaurus. So I think that Leviathan has the upper hand here, but it would be a good matchup. I don't think it would be uh, it wouldn't make quick work of it like the Orca squid matchup. Um, so I, I think this would be a, a, a sight to behold, to say the least. Um, and Basilosaurus is certainly a very powerful predator, but I think Leviathan would probably have the upper hand. The one thing that Basilosaurus might have on Leviathan would be its uh, kind of like its movement and agility. It might be more like it have some more dexterity and be able to kind of maneuver around Leviathan a little more. Whereas, you know, sperm whales are kind of more almost stiff animals, if you want to think about it that way. Basilosaurus just had this super elongate body, almost snake-like form, really weird uh, kind of like sea serpent like uh, body plan so it may be able to kind of outmaneuver leviathan but again with the intelligence I'd, and those massive bone crushing teeth i think at least for me in my book it's going to be leviathan milk Goliath. yeah i'm gonna Good give question. my advantage to oh what's your question um basilosaurus it has a really tiny head doesn't it uh yes and no um depends on what you mean by tiny because proportionally yes but that's just because the rest of its body is so incredibly long and, and large but proportionally it has a small head but it's still a relatively large head um but that's a good point because i mean i think you could probably fit that head within the mouth of leviathan and it could probably crush its entire skull with one bite so oh, <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a good point that's one of the things that i would give leviathan an advantage on is when I think of Leviathan, I think of like this big, robust animal. And then you think of Basilosaurus as this long, lanky thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like if Basilosaurus could get a bite off, it'll it'll hurt the Leviathan. But I feel mm -hmm. like if the Leviathan gets a bite on the Basilosaurus, it's, it's over for that animal. Yes. And probably regardless of where that bite along the body is, just because of how kind of narrow and elongate uh, the body of Basilosaurus is. I, I would agree with that. Um, I, I think given enough time, if uh, it's able to outmaneuver and get like several blows in on Leviathan, maybe Basilosaurus could take it out. But I, like you said, I think it's just, you know, one or two blows is all it's going to take from those massive jaws with those just enormous teeth. From Leviathan, and it'll so. be harder too for Basilosaurus because of the intelligence difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, the, they weren't, I, I wouldn't say archaeocetes, especially basilosaurid archaeocetes, were like unintelligent animals by any means, but uh, they did not have the very high intelligence of odonocetes. That's a much more derived thing that we see in that group, which comes from basilosaurids. You know, we think basilosaurids gave rise to the two groups we have today, the neocetes, so the baleen whales and toothed whales, but they hadn't gotten to that level of intelligence yet mm -hmm. in basilosaurus. So, and I'm how wondering... large? How large did Leviathan get? Uh, Leviathan rivaled Megalodon in size, so it was probably on the order of 50 to 60 feet. So it's probably similar in terms of length, but like you said, it's a much bulkier, more robust animal. Um, so I, I think it would probably weigh significantly more than Basilosaurus mm -hmm. would. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering, um, like, just how stocky and stiff and immobile Leviathan would be, because here's the thing, like, yeah, if it if it gets a basilosaurus, it'd be game over. However, I don't know. Due to how snake like it is, I just have this image in my head that it can just kind of slither around and avoid a bite and just kind of nibble this thing away. Um, I yeah, it, I think this comes down to mobility because even intelligence, like you know how hard it is to catch a lizard. Lizards are dumb; they're just more <laughs> agile than us. You know, like it's it's mm -hmm. tough. So I think this is this might be a mobility thing because. 
if Leviathan can get a bite off, yeah, it wins. But is there a chance it won't be able to get a bite off? That's the question. Well, how how agile are animals like extant sperm whales? Um, well, I wouldn't call them agile necessarily but they are very impressive in terms of like their diving capabilities um of course you know they're famous for being the like some of the deepest diving animals but i would say they're they're not super agile but i i see i definitely see what you're saying with basilosaurus possibly being more like i was even saying the same thing maybe more uh agile and whatnot but at the same time i don't think it moved around like a serpent i don't think that's really like a good that's been proposed especially with its it has really strange vertebrae if you look at the vertebrae of a basilosaurus uh, the um, neural process is really really tiny proportionally G generally in mammals you know they you kind of have like the interlocking uh process on top so that kind of limits side to side movement but they were really reduced so it's been proposed that they could do, you know, kind of more lateral snake-like serpent-like movements and move in almost any, you know, three-directional plane. But I really don't envision them um, moving like that. And one thing that's kind of a proponent for that is that the first group of Archaeoses, the earliest group that we have, or and I guess the only group that we actually have direct evidence in the bones for tail flukes, is basilosaurids we do know that they had flukes like modern whales i've got my little right whale here so these things right <laughs> this isn't bone but there's bone proxy for it you can see in the the distal most tail vertebrae um that they're dorsoventrally compressed and if they're compressed this way that's evidence for there being flukes there because that's what we what we observe in uh in modern whales and so we actually see that in things like dorodon and basilosaurus so we know that they had flukes and flukes are there in order to facilitate you know that hydrofoil yeah that motion which is kind of an up and down motion so i imagine basilosaurus didn't do a whole lot of lateral movement were they capable of it sure but i don't think this thing was slithering around super you know quickly and maneuvering around like a like you would envision a sea serpent would so i think it has the mobility upper hand on leviathan but i don't think it's enough um, and it would be that much significantly faster, like you think about a lizard or reptile being, because it is still a mammal. You got to keep that in mind. Despite yeah. the name Basilosaurus, right? We originally named it King Lizard because that's what people thought it was. They thought it was this big sea serpent. But it it is a mammal. This is a whale we're talking about. And because it had those flukes and it is the ancestor of all modern whales, I think it was probably doing dorsoventral undulation, just that up and down movement. And probably didn't have enough of a mobility upper hand to to defeat Leviathan. I got it. I'm gonna vote Leviathan. You've convinced me. I think Basilosaurus wins like like 15 percent of the time, maybe. But yeah, if I had to mm -hmm. bet, I'd vote it's a Leviathan. good matchup. But yes, I'm going with Leviathan. I I agree. I I also agree. My <clears throat> my one thought, um, and this is kind of in support of Leviathan, uh, would be considering they call it raptoral raptorial right yes yes um which would be a different niche than sperm whale what would i mean you would think if you know you have a sperm whale size well bigger than sperm whale sized animal hunting down other whales it'd have to be a lot more maneuverable so mm -hmm. i feel like that comparison might be flawed in a way true, true. i see that yeah but there's also the um it could also have relied on ambush, like some mm -hmm. slower animals, true. but but that stuff is very hard to tell. And mm -hmm. maybe there'll be some like I don't know biomechanic publications in the future about Leviathan because mm -hmm. it's like they're kind of receiving a lot of press lately, you know, being that it was this monstrous whale with teeth like that. Yeah. But I'm I'm gonna have to go Leviathan too. So it mm. looks like we're all in agreement on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. how, how much of Leviathan do we have, like, fossil record-wise? That's a great Thanks. question. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure. I know we have at least some partial skulls and teeth, for sure. I don't mm -hmm. know how much of the postcrania we have. That's a good question. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd have to check. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Interesting. So our next yeah. matchup is the Battle of the Plesiosaurs. We have two different sides. We have the pliosaur, which are the long-headed, short-necked 
plesiosaurs and then the more iconic <laughs> plesiosaur you know plesiosaurs with the very long necks and the smaller heads so mm -hmm. we have pliosaurus funkii which is the predator x if you remember that from like those late 2000s uh documentaries and then you have alberta nectes which is the longest plesiosaur i believe described i think that plesiosaur solos <laughs> so quickly alberta nectes <laughs> is doomed there's multiple reasons to believe this uh you have elasmosaur so that long necked plesiosaur type you call those elasmosaurs okay um and it's based off of elasmosaurus which is a genus but that body plan you just you know elasmosaur body plan you have elasmosaur skulls found in morocco that are digested um <laughs> that were just ripped off by like mosasaurs and eaten you get these big long neck triassic things i don't remember what they're called but they're found like decapitated like you find a skull and articulated neck verts and that's it like that neck is such a uh <laughs> yeah it's just such a risk and yeah, Plyosaurus kills it with, with not even any effort. Like it's fighting a squid eater. Like the thing's doomed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gotta I, ask I Jared, um, being that you're our marine reptile guy, what exactly is I, I can't believe I've never really thought about this. What exactly is or do we think it like what's the functional morphology behind that super elongate neck in Elasmosaurus? What what was the function of having that neck? So this has been uh again, I'm please use stories aren't really my forte, but I do know a little bit about this. The old interpretations of it are that they could like stick their head out of the water and whatnot. Um, but as far as I'm as far as I'm aware, more recent research has kind of shown that elasmosaurs they weren't very mobile creatures. Their necks were somewhat stiff and they were very good for long distance swimming. They're very streamlined, mm -hmm. but they're pretty stiff animals. And uh the explanation that has stuck most with me is that they were sticking their heads into these herds of fish and mm -hmm. not herds of fish, schools of fish. God, <laughs> they're sticking their necks into these schools of fish and the bulk of their body. They have this very bulbous looking body with big old flippers. That's the majority of the mass of the animal is going to be far away from the head. So schools of fish are kind of like dumb. They're going to see this yeah. massive entity, but they're not going to mm -hmm. be really concerned with a head that's, you know, the size of them. So it could probably just stick its head into these schools and snap away to, you know, feed. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what I'm seeing here is a matchup between something like that, which is adapted to eating small prey versus something like a pliosaurus with this massive head that was clearly, and we actually have direct evidence for eating much larger things, including Mr. Longneck over here. So uh, yeah. for me, it's easy. I'm with you, Jared. I think Pliosaurus takes this one. I agree. Sky is blue. Pliosaurus wins. That's. I was going to say, I mean, <laughs> just in a simple, maybe not even a paleontological understanding, long neck, longer target. Oh, yeah. Game yeah. Over. Well, this thing will bite it in half. <laughs> so fast. It's and have, have you ever seen, like, full-size Pliosaur teeth? Like, even look... Even Lyopleurodon, which I don't believe got as large as Pliosaurus, their teeth are massive. Dude, they're mm. bigger than Rex teeth. It's yeah. crazy. Like, like T-Rex teeth are not as big as a, as a big Lyopleurodon tooth. It is unreal. The and fact then that they're these conical. are just lying around in England is insane to me. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. like... <laughs> they're conical with these really deep striations, and they're mm -hmm. firmly implanted with big, big roots. The, wow. Those things were crushing whatever they're yeah, about. Yeah. So I'm definitely going Pliosaurus on this. I'm guessing Alberta Nectes probably had like really pointy needle-like teeth if it yeah. was a fish eater. Yeah, yeah most, yeah, okay. fish and squid, fish and squid mm -hmm. were their thing. Most elasmosaurs just have these very thin teeth. Yep. And Some were so like... thin that they've been recovered as sifters. So there's this I think it's from Antarctica. There's this creature that has been recovered as an animal that would, you know, pick up its teeth in the silty bottom and sift for things. Like their teeth got really, really thin. Interesting. So like if... We have a very interesting matchup, in my opinion. Wow. We have Carcharicles megalodon. And yes, 
I I do believe in Karkarikles and Otto Totus, but I do too. Hey, I do too. Y'all can flame after. Flame us nope. in the comments. Four four. I'm with you. Karkarikles. Yep. I don't know four. anything, so I go with y'all. <laughs> and then we have another one with a disputed genus name. Uh, mm -hmm. Stonysaurus uh, sicaniensis, which is, is AKA the, Shastasaurus. What? I think AKA so. AKA yes. Shastasaurus. Yeah, is that yeah. The other yeah. one. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's beyond yeah. our scope. I think figuring out mm -hmm. what genus it is, but but basically you have the largest macro predatory <laughs> true shark that has ever lived, and then you're yep. going up against uh, the largest marine reptile that is. Um, at least the largest print reptile that's been described mm -hmm. of Shawnisaurus, which is basically this around 70 foot long ichthyosaur that mm -hmm. was basically the king of the oceans in the Triassic. I, I, I don't think know. this is much of a competition personally. Uh, I, Shawnisaurus yeah. is going to be a giant whale, essentially, to a megalodon. <laughs> One, it has this skinny snout that mm -hmm. it probably wasn't using on anything robust. And um, a megalodon is used to taking down big prey. Is a Shonosaurus yep. used to that? No, not with that skinny <laughs> snout. So yeah, yeah, heck no. Megalodon solos. Yep. Yeah, I and agree. I, and I'll and agree with you, yeah. Yeah, it's I was just going to say also, a... megalodon has the, we think, probably the large, strongest bite force of any animal ever. Like, I think estimates at, at three times that of a T-Rex or something absurd like that. So, yeah, you know, crap. take a few chunks out of it. It's done. I yeah. think we have a potential one tap scenario here. <laughs> very, well, very it's a, I mean, Shawnee Star is a big animal. I don't know about one tap, That's but true. a few know. chunks and it, it's done. Yeah. How, how it like right this place. would play out is like Jared said, you would have the Shawnee source, which the Megalodon would see as a, as a whale and it would attack mm -hmm. it accordingly because like you said again the megalodon was used to going up against things that that were you know even larger than itself whereas shonisaurus as far as we know that's that was going up against smaller things it wasn't there really wasn't the same diversity at that time of massive animals and it wasn't going after those <coughs> so also, i'd like to clarify that uh, on Wikipedia it says that they got up to sixty nine <laughs> feet long. Nice. Um, oh, nice. Oh, God. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. uh, Megalodon's got a, a mouth full of these. Just had to pull this out, right? <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> this is and not then, a personal find, but it's a Maharan River tooth. But yeah, so this twenty thirteen paper suggests that I guess the Shastasaurus, which seemingly is the same animal would have suction feed suction fed mm -hmm. similar to beaked whales yeah that was and mm -hmm. that would you know explain the massive size we generally see when things start to filter feed they get really big we see it in mist of seats we see it in, yeah you know, a lot but of I it's a marine we... trend uh i'm gonna go with megalodon on this one yeah Same i don't agree. think this is a hard decision no that's a pretty easy one and and even still megalodon even if we're at like the conservative size estimates like before they elongated you know before they elongated it megalodon was still you know at 50 55 feet i don't think something 15 20 feet longer would have been a deal breaker for it no of course all these elongated not elongated uh arguments and papers attacking other people are still completely speculatory yeah and the amount well, of evidence that they have is embarrassingly minimal in my opinion yeah, yeah. We could could talk about uh, Perusetus, but I don't want to get into that because I'll <laughs> ramble for a while. But uh -oh. so um, chunky little feller, Megalodon <laughs> is moving on. <laughs> Who would have thought? So our next lineup is interesting. These are going to be the shark-like chondrichthians from the Paleozoic. So we have Adestis versus Cyvotus. For those this is, of this no, is hard. Yeah. So, so Adestis, Adestis. I have a question. Adestis. Yeah. Is it that one that this one? Oh yeah, yeah. You have okay, cool. So it has these yeah. like jagged, serrated, triangular teeth, and yeah. it has mm -hmm. this like vertical looking jaw. Yeah, so it's yep. called the scissor tooth shark. They're mm -hmm. 
within the order Eugenodonna forms, so they're more closely related to ratfish. Whereas mm -hmm. Cybotus, um, usually there is some discrepancy based on what phylogenetic um, classifications you'll interpret it with. But overall, they're classified as being closer related to sharks than, say, a Desis would be. And yeah, they're Cybotus in their own, had these they're in their own order. What? They're in their own order, the Tinacanthiforms. Yeah. No, yeah. But. So Cyvotus had these massive teeth, and instead of it being more of a cutting style dentition that Odessus has, Cyvotus has these gra these grasping teeth with tons of little cusplets on the sides mm -hmm. of them. And they have a cladodont style tooth design, which basically means they have this really large tooth base. And then on that, they have a elongated uh, medial cusp. And then they'll have these uh, lateral cusp splits that are to the sides of it. And these tooth bases got to around three centimeters long, which means the these came from massive, massive jaws. And they were believed to have been orca sized as far as like the largest specimens. So, oh, yeah. Uh, no, Jay, so me, though. Sorry, I, I have a question. Um, yeah, go for just because I, I need clarification on this. So I, and maybe people watching will too. Essentially, you had this wide root and then there was a very skinny tooth itself coming out of that root a very skinny blade coming out of that root is that I right i wouldn't call it skinny skinny but yeah it is it is like a long crown gotcha, gotcha. i wish okay. i had wish i had mine my cyvotus it's somewhere behind me um, so i'll once again go to to functional morphology there what what do we think is the function of those weird teeth in cyvotus cyvotus what, what were they eating that's my question. They were eating <laughs> well, there, other shark there like animals, fish. Yeah. There weren't a lot of bony fish around at that time. So they're going to be hunting a lot of other highly what derived. What period is Cybotus from? What, what uh, it varies. Um, classically, the, the Cybotus you typically see online are like Mississippian, uh, late Mississippian. Um, okay. The ones in Alabama are typically around 325 million years old. Yeah. Okay. So these are so, both carboniferous animals. They're just at different mm -hmm. times within the carbon. Yeah. Though, are placoderms I mean, extinct is... by that time? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They went, yeah, late Devonian. They, they got wiped out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's distinctly possible that Cyvotus and Adestus coexisted. I mean, we have some Neo Cyvotus has to come from somewhere. Sure. Uh, next question How big is Adestus? Adestus, uh, Adestus got like 22 feet ish. Mm. Almost orca sized. Almost. Though, I mean, sure. we do Cyvotis have. Cyvotus got like big orca size though. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Cyvotus, I think, I think, Cy, I mean, some of the big Cyvotus, some of the ones that are two plus inch wide tooth bases probably would have been like pushing 40. Yeah. Okay. I would so it would have been like on par with the largest <laughs> orcas that mm -hmm. recorded. And okay. yeah. and I think that the Adestus jaws, I think that, so those, those are meant for just tearing flesh. And I think that those would do a lot of damage. But I think with Cybotus, with its size, paired with its ability to grasp on and just tear chunks out, I'm going to have to give Cybotus the advantage. Mm -hmm. and there's I'm going to go with Cybotus as well. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to stir things up. I know the least about this, so I can't afford to have bad opinions. I think Adestus uh, being smaller is whatever. It has big old teeth that are serrated and will probably do a better job getting through the tough hide of a shark-like thing. And uh, Cyvotus's skinny teeth would embed themselves and probably break off and it won't be able to replace them fast enough and it can grab on, but I don't know if it'll do what it needs to. So I'm just going to stir things up and say Adestus. I wonder, um, did Adestids have dorsal spines? Do we know? I'm not 100% certain. Because that was something I was wondering. Because if an Adestid is throwing hands, or an Adestus is throwing hands with a Cyvotus and hits, a, hits one of their two giant dorsal spines, that might not be a pretty sight to begin <laughs> with. Um, and we're, I mean, we're talking like for, oh man, for like a 40 foot Cyvotus, 35 foot, maybe we'll call it 30, just call it 30. I mean, that's a monster dorsal spine, you know, 
two foot plus dorsal spine, probably. So and they have two of them. So <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Cyvotus was built for this <laughs> in a way. If only we had the soft tissue preservation. To Dude, show I'm today. holding out. I'm holding out like an old man with a gun who is trying to have like who's holding out against people trying to build a Walmart on his land. Like I know it's hopeless, but I'm I'm holding out with the Destus. I think I'm losing this one though. Mm, I think you are. That's okay. You know, pay paradise, put up a parking lot, right? Pay paradise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're the last decision, Chase. Oh, I've got I've got Cybotus. Okay. Got so look like it's Cybotus. I don't I don't think I mean a des a Destus would have tried very hard. I think it also might be a the winner comes out and then dies five minutes after <laughs> yeah. kind of situation. I would I would agree with that. Such a weird ratfish like fella. Mm -hmm. So our next matchup is one that we can see modern day analogs to, but these are these are you know obviously much larger size animals than than what we have now, and we have Macamosaurus rex, which is this very large marine crocodile or crocodilian from the early Cretaceous, and then we have an Eocene age giant sea snake. How do you say it? Paleophis colossus. Paleophis. Yeah. It was estimated to be between like 26 to upwards of 40 feet long. It's it's a snake that it doesn't really have any modern day analogs to, especially at that size. Mm. But this this is a tough one because we we see we see nowadays crocs and things like pythons facing off and you have winners and losers i think usually with your larger crocodilians they tend to they tend to win those type of battles a lot more frequently and that is going to lead me to choose macamosaurus rex but macamosaurus while it was it was initially described to be like 35 feet long which would make this a very easy fight in my opinion Oh my god. It was since downsized to be around like 21 feet or so. And that's because it has such a long skull that they used modern day crocodilians as counterparts mm -hmm. to estimate the size. Whereas it turns out that proportionally with what it was related to, those skulls were far larger in comparison to the body than what you see on modern day crocodilians. Dang. See, well, I think um, if you look at like the caimans versus anacondas that you get in South America, like black caimans, those are they get big. Um, I don't know as much about this, but I think they approach 20 feet. Uh, you get anacondas that are above 20 feet, too. But caimans are a big part of the diet of anacondas. Anacondas eat caimans all the time. They're probably not eating 20 foot caimans, but a big snake is surprisingly capable you wouldn't think so but they're surprisingly capable to take down crocodilians um so if we're talking what did you say paleophis is like what 40 feet yeah 40 foot versus a 20 something foot croc i'm actually gonna i'm gonna move in the direction of the snake i don't know if it was a constrictor if it was a constrictor it would be winning if it wasn't a constrictor it's getting tanked See, that, um, but, that's mm. the thing. We don't believe, or at least from what I've read, we don't believe that it was a constrictor. We also mm -hmm. don't believe it was venomous. Mm. Oh, and on top okay, of that, that changes it up. Yeah. And on top of that, it was it was very um, primitive or basal compared to other ones within that um, genus, which mm -hmm. means that it wasn't as well adapted to marine life as some of the other members of its genus which also would be a disadvantage of it because crocodilians they've been they've been you know marine for on and off throughout millions of years all right well if current research 
suggests that it wasn't a constrictor, I'm going to have to go with Macamosaurus. But if it does turn out to be a constrictor, I definitely think it's it's winning. But I guess it's not. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Macamosaurus. Yeah, I brought I brought I brought her over. <laughs> oh, to, uh... it's a paleophis. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I brought her over to tell her she was getting eaten by like noodles by a <laughs> crocodile. Is that a hog nose that you have there? It is. Yeah, Sick. I have like, four hogs. Dude, king, nice. My, my king snake is behind the camera. Little heterodon, right? Isn't that the Latin name yes. for hog snakes? Heterodon nascus. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah, I think is is there anyone who's holding out for Paleophis? I'm uh, no. Macamosaurus. For me, this one, the size isn't really what's important in this matchup. I think it's you got to look at the weaponry here. Right. What do these things have that they're going to be using against the other animal? And I think with Makamasaurus, you're talking about a crocodilian with these jaws that can snap shut that, you know, have these large teeth, these big conical teeth versus a snake that we think wasn't a constrictor because I don't think there's any reason to believe it was. I don't think any modern sea snakes do that. I think that's just a terrestrial snake thing. Um, and you know, we don't have any evidence of it. So for me, Macamosaurus takes a bite at any part of the body of this snake, no matter how big it is. And, uh, even if, you know, it might have the length advantage, I think Macamosaurus is just more robust and has those jaws that could really just snap it in half. So I'm yeah. definitely going to go with Macamosaurus. Yeah, if you yeah. bite a bite a snake anywhere outside of, you know, past the cloaca down to the tail, it's more or less a death sentence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just simply, you know, how yeah. it is. So we're going Macamosaurus on this. Yes, oh, yeah. sir. I so now we are down to our last round or our last um, two contestants in round one. We have Zephactinus Audax. Versus Dunkleosteus Teruli. Dude, so what are we thinking on this? Okay, I so I know they downsized Dunkleosteus or Dunkleosteus rather. Um, it used to be interpreted as really big. Anyone know how big it is considered now? Like uh, thirty point five feet at for like the large individuals, which yeah, is so I think sad. that was my childhood gone. I believe it I mean, was I, like, I could be third, like 25 to 30 in the old research. And now they basically just took the animal and like compressed, <laughs> compressed <laughs> yeah. the uh, postcranial elements of it. So yeah. Russ Engelman's work is he's the man. I met him at SVP. He's cool. Um, his work suggests that any suggestion that Dunkle Osteus got over 16 feet is a poorly supported argument. Dude. This is perfect because you know how big that fact in a Scott 16 or 17 feet. And oh, I have less strong opinions. Strong opinions. <laughs> I thought the so, okay. I thought the back this can push like 20. Maybe, maybe. But for uh, those that don't know, 17 is like the traditional, like when people ask you, how big is the Zyphactinus? Or you ask them, they'll say 16. Oh, yeah, the, maybe you know, that common 20. question you get asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah true, I've been, true, dude, true, I've been true, asked true. that so much on campus. You know, this guy came up to me at Walmart the other day. He was like, hey, how big is the Zyphactinus? <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, it's a Western interior seaway animal, and I do find their teeth occasionally. Okay. So I get that question no, in the comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, anyway. Right. You should look this up. There's a specimen that came out of Kansas. It's a big one. It's this is probably like a 15 foot animal. It's called the fish within a fish fossil, and it swallowed mm. another fish, probably Gillicus. I'm not sure. That like, it swallowed a six foot fish whole, whole, and it mm -hmm. like it freaking died because of it. Like its organs just exploded because it swallowed a six foot predatory fish whole. But th they were metal. These things were so metal. Imagine a Goliath tiger fish that like Jeremy Wade caught and then make it absolutely humongous. It has an enormous gait and giant teeth. Um, I don't know. This is going to be, this is going to be tough because the thing is, isn't uh Dunkley Osteus armored? Yes. So it's a placoderm. Yes. So it's, it's a placoderm. Head. Yeah. See here <sighs> uh, for me, this one's not even close. Really? I think that, Yes, I think Dunkle Osteus wins in attack and defense in this one. Because it's got... Speed, What'd you say? Zephactinus has speed. So Dunkle Osteus... Sure, but stubby thing. the only thing speed is going to do for it is 
prolong its prolonging its life for a little bit longer. It's just going to be swimming away from Dunkle Ostrich trying to escape because <laughs> that you got to like Dunkle Ostrich has no not teeth but just sharp bone, just bony protrusions. That's yeah. basically this scissor like, like it's like a guillotine, and so. Zephactinus, yeah, sure, it, it could like, swallow smaller fish whole, absolutely, and I'm sure it was a, a very, you know, respectable predator, but it's got these really pointy teeth that specialize for eating, like, smaller, just fleshy yeah. fish, and Uncle Osteus has is just covered in these bony armor plates, so it's got defense on its side, those little pointy teeth aren't going to do anything, anything to that armor, and then it's just, it's massive jaws with those slicing bony, um, basically guillotines i think uh dunkleosius with dunkleosius one clears. bite one bite in this effect and this is done because yeah you know they have such a strong bite force and you're right mm -hmm. this can't mm -hmm. touch the head at all it can't get yeah. anywhere near there no nope. but the thing it's is armored it's a tank yeah. but zephactinus is so agile it has a size advantage and it still has these these crazy sharp teeth and the the posterior side of Dunkleosteus is not armored. Mm. So I how I envision this happening is that Dunkleosteus would die from a slow bleed out from this effect and is swimming around towards its flank because I don't see the Dunkleosteus being able to escape. I think that this effect would probably not get bit by Dunkleosteus just because of how slow. I'd imagine Dunkleosteus being, especially with its new body plan. It Maybe, just yeah. Because think about it, think about tarpon. Like I, I, I agree to an extent. I, David had me for a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I love Zyphaxinus. I'd like to see it win, but he has a great point with the armor. But if Dunkleosteus has exposed parts, maybe Zyphaxinus has a chance. Um, yeah. because imagine like a tarpon. You know, a tarpon like they're fast. Those things are crazy. Mm -hmm. And make it two times bigger with teeth. Like these things move. Zephactin has moved, dude. Like, I don't know. Um, if they can get too. around to a soft part of Dunkleosteus, probably. I know Zephactinus will be hard to bite for sure. And Zephactinus yeah. is used to going up against badasses like like Mosasaurs, uh, Cretaxirana, things like that. They're used to that. Dunkleosteus was the king. He wasn't used to going up against really anything Ooh. that could rival outside of, you know, another Dunkleosteus. Yeah, but like, fair point. saying a Zyphactinus could go up against different things when getting likely destroyed by most Mosasaurs, like, of any, like, reputable mm -hmm. size, um, is a bit bold, I but think. But that's a Mosasaur. That's not a 13-foot Dunkleosteus. Yeah. yeah. Mosasaurs are fast large streamlined that's true but i mean what yeah. you know what's what's three or four feet and I mean, plus the fact is doesn't give a crap about anything L like as you said like it <laughs> yeah except die from for swallowing eating things fish too big, big and exploding on their yeah. own. <laughs> they just don't care <laughs> they're they're the definition i don't know i mean i've seen so many dead zyphactinus i mean i've seen that one in particular and seen, seen so many, many living ones no 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 so uh so many extant bony fish that successfully kill themselves by eating something too large yeah. i don't know i mean dunkle osteus right way to go had one of the biggest bite forces of any animal ever um and they were a fairly they, they were seemingly a primitive suction feeder as well so i feel like one bite game over kind of situation and I don't think they'll get a bite though, so I'm going Zephactinus on this. Okay, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm going Dunkleosteus. We have an even number of people. This is unfortunate. Yeah, we do. <sighs> we can we can settle the this. Phone. <laughs> we we can settle this with like a rock paper scissors worst scenario. <laughs> so, so do we have two Dunkleosteus and two Zephactinus right now? Yeah, I'm I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. I think it's a toss up. Um, mm. I think. If Dunkleosteus gets a bite, it wins. If Zyphactinus does, does Zyphactinus is also stupid though? Like I don't know. It, it's it's yeah, a see that's that's the thing. Who are who are we? Dunkleosteus is much smarter though. Yeah, yeah true. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Huh. I don't know. I think if Dunkleosteus yeah, gets like... a bite, it wins. And by virtue of that, 
Um, well, do you think that it's likely that it would get a bite? Because that'll determine it. Because if it can't, you know, it's a fact and it wins. But if it, I mean, if it's a if it's a decent suction feeder, if Zyphacnus gets anywhere close to the mouth, womp womp. Mm. See, here's my thing. We're kind of like assuming Zyphacnus would be smarter. I feel like that's like comparing, you know, yeah, like apples right. to oranges. They're both I mean, dumb. They're, <laughs> they're it's, both. It's dumb. a marginal thing. Um, I don't know. I feel like suggesting that Zyphacnus would systematically figure out that the tail end is not armored is a mm-hmm. is a bold leap. Well, I, I agree, just... and I I'd also say that even if it did avoid getting bit by the Dunkleosius, and it managed to maneuver its way around to the you know tail end and got some bites in, what's it really gonna do to the Dunkleosius? I mean, it sure it might have had a somewhat powerful jaw, but I just think with those pointy teeth, those that's just you know that's so specialized for eating like small fish. It's it's gonna yeah maybe make the Dunkleosius bleed. I don't think it's gonna be able to kill it. I mean yeah, all of the vital so parts of the organism. Think think about the you know the parts that are targeted by predators. The head right, the chest cavity where all of your important organs are. You know your heart and everything. That's all covered by armor. That is all you know tanked up so so the tail, I think, if it bites the tail it can hurt it it might make it bleed a little bit i don't think it's going to kill it i think i think considering the fact that zephatinus is conical teeth there's no carina um and one they're stupid they don't care at all about anything it's going to break teeth biting armor and i don't think mm-hmm. it's smart enough to figure out where armor's not i do think it loses like 60 percent of the time yeah, and I you think... know what's not going to break? Those pointy teeth are going to break. You know it's not going to break? Yeah, Bone. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm going to Guillotine go gun. hard. Bone scissors one. are not going to break. So yeah. we'll I'm going to get stuck. Colossus for me. Yep. So now we're on round two. So oh, this Jesus. is where it gets really interesting. Excited. We have Orca versus Tylosaurus. <laughs> Yo, so me, versus me versus Garrett. David Battle, I think. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I think they have the same advantages in that where one has an advantage over other animals is the fact that they can ram things very, very well because they're probably equally powerful swimmers. They're probably equally mobile. Um, but Tylosaurus is bigger. By virtue of it being bigger, I think it does make itself a bigger target and orcas we can see are good at ramming. If it hits that orca, though, the orca's probably going to have a tough time dealing with that because, yeah, it can ram. It can probably ram better than an orca because it's a more concentrated force. It has bigger jaws. Their lower jaw, there's a little space that allows it to open its jaw tremendously wide. So uh, most orcas have huge bites that they can take. But I do think it being bigger is kind of a disadvantage in this case because it's simply a bigger target for an orca to do some damage with a ram attack as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with the slightly larger size being a disadvantage here for Tylosaurus. And another thing to consider is that I think orcas would be faster. I think they're both fast swimmers and they're both relatively agile. But I think an orca, importantly, would be able to accelerate faster. Um, having that fluke, you can go from you know just cruising speed to really fast very quickly in a you know, very short amount of time. And I think that would be useful in both avoiding being hit from the Tylosaurus and also accelerating into the, the opponent and, and doing some damage. So uh, I think this would be a great matchup. I'm going to stick with my bias, though. For me, it's an orca. I think it has the intelligence advantage, which is also something that's very important to consider in terms of, you know, these animals coming up head to head and having any ter- terms of strategy in their their battle, uh, if you could call it that. Um, I think an orca is going to find a way to outsmart and overcome the Tylosaurus on that. I, I think, yeah, I, I think that's a, a really, really important thing to, to say is that the size you know, being bigger is not always going to be better in these matchups. And I think this is a case where orcas would be faster just via their anatomy and just the fact that they can accelerate faster. I th- I think they'd be able to. Um, but also, yeah, it does give a bigger target for the orca, the tiles horse being larger. Yeah. Yeah. And because these are both <laughs> such capable animals and yeah, Tylosaurus is a little bit larger, 
on the max end, but I think that the intelligence factor is going to be the biggest determinant of who wins this. And mm. I think there's a comparison there. And and we have to, we have to kind of uh, ask ourselves like, what circumstances are they meeting? Because here's the thing. If you put an Orca and a Talosaurus like facing each other, like in the octagon and they're, you know, freely floating in the water and it's like, okay, fight. I think an Orca will win that. If a mo if a Tylosaur gets the jump on an Orca, it will win, I think, every single time. Like it's kind of a one shot. If it if it rams that thing, the orca's done. And uh so sure. if Orca gets ambushed, it's dead every time. But if you put them together facing each other and it's like, okay, yeah. fight, I think an orca's gonna win like 70% of the time, just because again, they're smarter and lizards, they're so cool and I love them, but face it, they're so stupid. So <laughs> <laughs> not as stupid as fish, but yeah yeah not as smart as a mammal um i think we're kind of taking the assumption that it's you know gladiator arena style where we're just dropping them yeah. in there and being like okay go fight so i think yeah, yeah i think it's going to be the orca I'm that's my vote at least of course yeah because if we were like oh well if you know the orca got the jump on a tylosaurus it'd probably be the same like you know orca wins you know i think if one gets the jump on the yeah. other it's probably going to be a win for that animal mm -hmm. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. Oh, Glad actually, though, I do have something to say about this. Uh -oh. I do have something to say about this. We have to consider, like, the classic, like, who will win, gorilla versus grizzly bear? The most convincing argument I've ever heard is that gorillas aren't fighting things that are equal to them. Grizzly bears are always fighting each other. Now, uh -huh. tylosaurs constantly were fighting themselves. They were constantly fighting other mosasaurs. Um, are orcas really contending with, like, dangerous, dangerous <laughs> armed animals? Um, I, okay. Fair, but they always they usually get the jump on a great white. They they come in, they ram yes. it, and there's not much of a fight. Well, yeah. but I well, think I mean, they back with pods, so it is a. I, I think they fight each other. That's the thing. I think they there do. are okay. you know they have like turf wars, <laughs> gotcha. where you have kind of like opposing pods that will get into brawls with each other. I don't know if that's been recorded and, ob and observed, but I feel like I've heard that it it has been. So the orcas fighting other orcas. So yes, they do go head to head with. Uh, with pretty formidable things being themselves and i was gotcha. gonna say I okay mean, great whites bail <laughs> whenever oh, yeah. they yeah. recognize an orca's there because they know oh, yeah. they're gonna get you know rocked the road. yeah they, they'll they leave an area that they usually like patrol the great whites and they'll like stay away for like at least a year they've been observed like avoiding that area if they see orcas there <laughs> They're they scared want shit. Their basically. liver. <laughs> yeah. I'm still going work on this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. I think Bye. I think a Tylosaur wins some of the time, but mm -hmm. if I had to like bet my house, I would bet Orca and grit my teeth. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be an easy fight for either. No. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good one. Okay, so we have that Ooh, and now this next one. <laughs> Oh, another Leviathan marine mammal marine reptile here. Okay. Oh, I'm going man. Leviathan personally because, like we said before, with the intelligence, but mm -hmm. also so that they're both very well armed. They both have massive teeth. I personally envision Leviathan as being a sturdier animal. It's it's built much more robustly. Whereas like Pliosaurus, I'd imagine it being very nimble with those very long um flippers but at the same time they're they have this large skull but it isn't as strong necessarily in that they can't really shake prey side to side because it's it's comparatively weak like they've done studies that um compared to like if it was scaled down to a crocodilian size an extant one that is it has a weaker jaw than those so like by no means was this a weak animal but it had some limitations and I'm, I'm just not seeing Leviathan, especially considering its size difference too. Mm -hmm. having, I mean, it'll have some problem, but I don't see it having a ton of a problem taking on a Pliosaurus. And it's bigger. Yeah. I think it's yeah. bigger too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think this is another case where it's like it, if Leviathan gets a bite, Pliosaurus with those teeth, uh, it's pretty much game over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I can envision scenarios where maybe Pliosaurus being, you know, maybe a little more agile, especially having like, they had four flippers, right? Four and hind limbs were both flippers. Is that correct? Yeah, they had four so and they were I, very large as well. Yeah, so I, I I can see it having some more maneuverability, but just with the, the sheer size of Leviathan and how robust and just thick it is, <laughs> yeah. I don't think... Uh, I don't think I'd be able to take it out. But like like I said, you know, maybe there are some some circumstances where Pliosaurus would win, but in general, I'm gonna give this to Leviathan. Yeah. It's, yeah. Was, it's just those those teeth is just crazy. I was gonna say, I feel like Leviathan could tank more blows from a Pliosaurus than mm. you know, vice versa for sure. Yeah, which it might have to. Maybe, you know, Pliosaurus gets some blows in and it, it does some damage for sure. But mm -hmm. uh winner i think leviathan's coming out on top yeah i yeah, agree and, and also pliosaurs aren't as massive as like what we saw when we were kids watching walking with dinosaurs we saw that monstrous laoplorodon snatching the allosaur yeah, um, yeah like an 80 foot they reconstructed yeah. it as like yeah, they, they, they long, weren't like, like that at least not that we know pliosaurs mm -hmm. was you know in the 30s for um length Whereas Leviathan, like you said before, a 50, 60 foot whale, I don't see, I don't see Pliosaurus really standing much of a chance. Yeah. That Pliosaur from that show walked so the Jurassic World Mosasaur could run. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're going Leviathan. Uh, yeah. this. A 200 go. foot Mosasaur. Yeah. yeah. And now, and now the two ways. Kendrithians. Oh, oh God. Megalodon. Yeah, it's this is on next question. <laughs> Look, hold on. I mean, like, like that. Yeah, know, no, that's versus cool. Versus that's cool. A tooth the size of the plate of rock. <laughs> I'm insane. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's so Cyphotus and Megalodon ain't ain't a competition at all. Yeah. No, mm -mm. Uh, the Megalodon snap. smaller estimates. Oh I don't see it winning. There's, so, I, I don't, I, I honestly cannot see a shot. Where a full, a, like an adult megalodon, you know, loses to an adult cyphotus. I don't, I just can't no. envision any possibility of that happening. You know, it probably would have hunted cyphotus if cyphotus was alive at the same time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but a prey source. I, honestly, like it might have just been a, like a snack for it though. But at, at the same time, you know, megalodon was eating baleen whales, yes, but we have to also remember that baleen whales were not nearly as large as they are today back in the Miocene. So, you know, they were all 20, 30 feet animal. They weren't very large. So actually, Cybotus, yeah, would have definitely been a prey source for megalodon had it been around. But I mean, if Cybotus, you know, if the megalodon just literally just sat there in the water column, didn't even try to attack Cybotus, what is Cybotus even going to do to the megalodon, right? With those little prickly teeth, it's like, and that would be like accurate. Little latch on the truth. Oh, you pop my back. Now uh, go yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Now let me slice you in half with one bite. Well, Savotis had a good run, but I think yeah, that's was, one of the easiest decisions. It was an it effort. It was an right effort. There. Yep. And then that leads us to Machimosaurus versus Dunkleosteus. Oh, oh man, this is <laughs> two armored animals. Mm. this is like I'm that march man this basketball show you don't watch i'm gonna say macamosaurus it doesn't have this like alligator like snout um that it can generate force through with this like wide robust bone it's a little thinner mm -hmm. um, seems i i'm gonna guess it's a fish eater based off of that alone um it may have been a fish eater it would not be a dunkley osseous eater though uh Again, Dunkleosteus is mouth that those bones that it has, those scissors can go through crocodilian armor pretty easily, I imagine. Um, yeah, with that bite force, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Machimosaurus, yeah, it's a croc, and crocs fight each other all the time, and they're extremely handy. Uh, Dunkleosteus is going to have to do some major work on this thing. It's going to have to literally, like, decapitate it to get it to die. Because, you know, crocs, they bite each other's faces off and those things still live. Like, it's crazy. But yeah. um, Dunkleosteus is probably going to come through here. Um, yeah. I don't think its armor is going to be beaten by those thin jaws. 
Yeah, I yeah, feel like um, Agnes Torres, I agree. Yeah, in the marine environment. So, like, if this was in an open ocean, uh, I think that it has somewhat of a disadvantage. I feel like it would be fairly hard for it to maneuver or outmaneuver Dunkleosteus and get away from its jaws. And then, like you said before, its long snout, I feel like it's... I, I don't see it standing as fair of a chance Mm, yeah i was i like i was looking at uh, uh magnosaurus skull and it looks kind of i mean it's not quite garial level of thin elongation but it's still fairly thin and elongated like mm-hmm. honestly like most marine crocodiles were uh you mm-hmm. know most marine crocodiles is but in the cretaceous and i get i assume the mesozoic this is me assuming um were much more of like a fish eating animal that had a more like garial like thing and so i don't think you know, dunkel osteus was built to hunt big animals bigger animals i would say than magmasaurus so i would lean dunk yeah i'm leaning dunk too. i'm gonna go with dunkel osteus I mean, even if there's dunk- a size disadvantage kind of crazy that a 13 foot animal is moving on to the semifinals. yeah well it's probably about to get swallowed whole Dude, magmasaurus shoots straight on <laughs> Okay, oh, yeah, so here right. we go for semifinals. the semifinals. We have wow. Orca versus oh, Leviathan. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, so Orca man. had a great run, but when you're comparing two apex whales and one of them is Leviathan, I don't see, mm. I don't see hope for a solo Orca. Okay. This, I have to speak on this, right? Obviously. I'm, I'm the whale guy here. This is heartbreaking for me because I love orcas. They're my favorite living animals. But I think Leviathan wins this. And I will say, if you give a a pod of orcas versus Leviathan, they'd be able to take it down. But 1v1, just one individual versus one individual, even if it's a fully grown, like, max size orca, uh, I think Leviathan wins here. I mean, just, like... Similar intelligence, we'll assume they're, you know, equally as smart. They're both odonocetes. They've got big brains. Um, and so they'll they'll be pretty equal intelligence. So that doesn't give them the upper hand in the, on either side. So you really just got to look at sheer strength here and like just what they've got in their arsenal. And for orcas, they've got, you know, powerful jaws, big, strong teeth, but nothing compared to live. And I think mm-hmm. just, a, you know, a, a bite or two, it's Bro. just going to crush that orca so i've been yeah. preying on their downfall this whole time it's just oh, oh, me. don't say this that they're my favorite <laughs> i love this <laughs> i have to go leviathan if it's a I 1v1 do. moment of yep. silence for the orca Rest nah indeed. son they killed my title <laughs> score ain't no way <laughs> this makes me so i'm like avenged at the end of the day who's the real winner though orcas are still around today leviathan isn't so Fair. That is true. <laughs> that is true. We're going Leviathan. Mm-hmm. Do we even Leviathan. have to do this other one? I mean, like... <laughs> it's basically Megalodon versus a guppy for it. <laughs> yeah. Meg versus Dunkleosteus. Yeah, ain't no way. It would realistically Sorry. swallow it. <laughs> yeah. so... it, would, it would be interesting to see, like, the bite force of a Megalodon, like an adult Megalodon jaw on the body armor of Dunks. I, I think it's going to break some teeth. That's going to hurt. It. Yeah, straight it's going to hurt. It. It's going to break some teeth, but it's not going to be enough for Dunk to turn the tables. It, yeah, yeah, it's dude. Like a megalodon is going to be hungry after. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> this is... it will get. This is uh, it, but I think that's about it. This is what megalodon eats on a diet. Yes, and the thing <laughs> it's is, watching its calories. <laughs> dude, look at how modern sharks treat each other. You look, you see how many scars the gray white has. Like, if it gets bitten by a dunk, it's not gonna care. Like, yeah, it might hurt it. It's but. It's and if you if you had to be fair on the conservative estimate of a megalodon, like a fifty foot meg, and then like an old like thirty five foot dunkleosteus, like what they used to think that that would have been more fair of a fight. But when they elongate Megalodon and then shrink Dunkleosteus, it kind of true. <laughs> it's chances. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Gone. Yeah, so we're oh, going man. Megalodon, which That's leads gone. us to our ah. Would you look at that? Oh. 
It's and the this matchup is I wanted in the final. This could have happened. This, this did probably happen. did happen. Yeah. This probably did happen. So uh, yeah, these Biden are two animals that Megalodon. they lived in the same time period, in the same, they were, you know, same seas. The Megalodon, at least, was, uh, you know, it was um, cosmopolitan distribution. So it was everywhere. Global yeah. distribution. We find their teeth everywhere. Um, Leviathan's known from Peru. And we sure as heck have Megalodon teeth from Peru. So we know they coexisted same time, same place. So this Leviathan, is a matchup that almost certainly happened. Wasn't Leviathan also I, found in Australia? There's some Leviathan teeth from there. I think there's some isolated in Melbourne? teeth from there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, the, uh, another place. They were probably relatively widely distributed. Um, whether or not they actually fought, we're not sure. We kind of assume it because they were probably competing for the same prey. They were both probably preying on small baleen whales. Um, and so the, it's a fair assumption that they would have run into each other and occasionally fought. They probably weren't dueling all the time. They maybe weren't, you know, arch nemeses like we'd like to imagine in our head because it's cool to think about. Uh, but here we go. We, you know, we get to actually you know, play out this hypothetical that may not have been a hypothetical. Um, this is going to be really interesting because I so, think it's really close. <laughs> can, can can I throw in my two cents here? I've never... Yeah, absolutely. Like, you get these, like, YouTube videos all over, like, like Megalodon versus versus Leviathan. Who wins? I've never watched a single one of those. Uh, this is my opinion that's unadulterated. Um, I'm going to guess that, yeah, they're similar sizes, but a Meg is probably more agile. I'm gonna assume I would, because I would it's not so, as yes. stocky, and I'm gonna yeah. guess it probably has a bigger mouth as well. And um, yes, yeah. if it's if it's the fact that it has serrated teeth, it can take nice, probably like enormous cookie cutter looking bites out of a leviathan. A leviathan has these peg like teeth, so if it gets a meg in its mouth, it's probably gonna have trouble like that meg's not gonna really get out of it but i think it's just gonna be harder for a leviathan to get a hold of a meg than it will be for a meg to get a hold of a leviathan and a i'm gonna point. go meg and i would also say that with the teeth of leviathan they were these massive like bulbous things right and what that's you know really an adaptation for as far as the functional morphology that goes it, it's bone crushing right and sharks don't have hard bones so yeah, they right. have cartilaginous yeah. skeletons um is it going to do damage to the megalon absolutely but i think those massive teeth that we see in leviathan are adapted to breaking the bones the hard bones of small baleen whales which is probably their their prey source so i i would agree with you i think a single bite from a meg on leviathan is going to do a lot more damage it's just going to take a giant chunk out of it it's going to be bleeding it's not going to be a fun time for the leviathan um if leviathan gets a bite on megalodon i think it's going to hurt it for sure but it's not doing what those teeth are you know really specialized to do which is crushing a hard vertebrate bony skeleton like baleen whales have so for me that and as well as megalodon probably being more agile having that lateral quick movement like uh like fish and cartilaginous fish do um even though leviathan is an odonocete it has that intelligence i think just these are two similarly sized apex predators it's going to come come down to kind of the sheer strength and their weaponry so for me as much as it pains me to say and i you know my bias is with leviathan i think megalodon wins this matchup but do you think that Leviathan could um, give blunt force trauma to Megalodon? Because that could be another strategy that it could have. Yeah, absolutely. It could be. Oh. Could be. Um, <laughs> it might be able to stun it. And, you know, if one of these two is going to do that to the other, it's going to be Leviathan because it's the smart one. <laughs> and it's going to yeah. think to do that. So if um, it's stunned, those teeth will just rip chunks out of that. And that would that would be it for Megalodon right there. See, I sure. think that when you have these two similarly sized animals, Megalodon's teeth are adapted for eating whales with these very yes. large serrated teeth. And as you said, Leviathan has these big crushing teeth, but mm -hmm. Leviathan most likely consumes sharks on a regular basis too. And I think that its intelligence is going to 
give it the upper hand in this, I'm going to have to go Leviathan. I think it's bold to say that Leviathan's uh, intelligence is going to outdo Megalodon's mobility because intelligence only takes you so far. Like, there's a reason more animals have evolved to be mobile than hyper intelligent. Like, it worked for us because it was an unoccupied niche that allowed us to make tools. Like, that's that's it. If it was effective for everything, it would evolve for everything. Um, like, again, my example, uh, we're a lot smarter than a lizard. Try catching one, though. It's tough. Lizards are more mobile. Um, I don't think that a, a Leviathan strategy has is, is going to prepare it for attacking a megalodon i i just i can't I imagine think a megalodon leviathan, will maneuver it i can't imagine leviathan not being mobile though like i don't think it's this as a meg though for stiff mobile not as a meg? As, but i think it's enough and then when you have something of that massive size and then those teeth it's it's a well-equipped animal if it can ram and stun the meg then it's basically over for the Meg because it can just rip out the liver with those giant teeth. So do we do we think this is a question? Um, do we were there comparably sized different whales that these two animals would have been preying on, or were all other whales in that like twenty to thirty foot category at this time? Um... Yeah, the largest baleen whales at the time probably did not exceed 40 to 50 feet maximum. That's like a high max. So they were all in that smaller range. Yeah. they We only really mm. see baleen whales like explode in size in pretty recent times, like Pliocene, Pleistocene. Like mm. blue whales are a pretty new innovation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. they're pretty new to the scene um so i mean they were feeding on probably similar prey but i wouldn't say that they were comparable in size to these two mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um born. for me another thing to consider is that these two are similar in like size if you consider the overall body size but i think something that's important to think about is the, the size of their like their gape you know, like the size of the mouth, I think a, the mouth of a megalodon would be significantly larger in terms of area and would take a much larger chunk out of Leviathan, I agree. Um, as, especially with the, you know, serrated, giant serrated teeth like this <laughs> that would be coming down with a force of just like unfathomable power the what we think is probably the strongest bite force of any animal ever i think that would just you know take a massive chunk out of it and then leviathan would either bleed to death or just get bit again and again by megalodon which i think has the mobility advantage and i agree with you ben that i think leviathan isn't like a super stiff animal it would definitely be somewhat mobile but i think the sl even if it is a slight advantage it's that's a pretty important slight advantage to have that mobility uh for megalodon so well, um it depends. if they if their brain power allows them to process things faster and they can react faster because reaction is in some ways even more important than agility because if they sure. can react that split second faster it doesn't matter if the other animal is more mobile because mm -hmm. it will if you have something like that and then it goes like there, it still has like a 60 foot animal that has you turn around. Right. Here's the thing. Absolutely. Yeah. But Here's I don't know thing. if you can like say there's a, you know, like a positive correlation, like a, a, you know, linear relationship there with intelligence and reaction time. Cause I think reaction is all it, it ties into intelligence, but I think it's almost more of like almost an instinct thing. Like there are, I agree. Unintelligent animals that, you know, are, have incredible reaction times. Like I'll go back to Jared's example of, you know, we're much smarter than the lizards, but they're stupid fast. And I think lizards have probably insane reaction times, but they're not hyper intelligent. Mm. I agree. Look at slow motion footage of a rattlesnake ambushing a kangaroo rat. Would you say you're smarter than a kangaroo rat? Yes. Can you dodge <laughs> well, a rattlesnake bite? Hell no. 
So I'm thinking about those videos of the snakes and the cats where a snake tries to lunge at the cat, but you see the cat has a faster reaction time and the cat is an active predator like Leviathan is. So I think it's a little easier to compare than like a um, more herbivorous animal, but like just seeing like the cat like slap the attacking snake. That's that's like kind of my yeah. thought process on it. But, but the thing mm-hmm. is, another active predator is Megalodon. So I don't think one has an advantage over the other there. In reaction speed, absolutely not. In fact, it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's one has an advantage in reaction speed. I'm and still I definitely also, rolling with Megalodon. I'm convinced it's Megalodon on this one. I do I, also I, think that Megalodon would have the advantage in its ability to maneuver its own body. Um, <clears throat> I I would think that um, Megalodon would probably, just based on how sharks work and mm. nearly being bit by <laughs> grabbing a shark's tail and having it whip around on me, um, oh. I would imagine even if Leviathan got a shot on Megalodon, if it didn't get a shot on the upper section of the body, Megalodon could probably fairly effectively whip around and give mm. give Leviathan a taste of his own medicine. That I don't is... know. If, I can imagine just by the size of Megalodon, it probably wouldn't have been as maneuverable as modern mm-hmm. sharks, uh, at least modern smaller sharks. But right. I'd imagine it'd be able to turn around on itself fairly effectively that's a really good point and i'm gonna completely agree with you there i think a key aspect of this battle is the ability to turn around you know Mm -hmm. yeah and i think that if you think about the way in terms of like orientation in space that these two animals are adapted to with fish in general and sharks like megalodon they've got you know these fins on their tail and they're up and down there's a reason for that is because they move like this and so in in, in terms of turning on a dime and turning around and also like dodging attacks if you want to think about that like the lateral movement the this plane here moving side to side is what's going to be important in this battle because you're trying to get you know blows on the opponent and you're trying to avoid blows from the opponent and so with leviathan being a, a, a mammal and a whale with its flukes right on its tail they're this way there's a reason for that it does this up and down movement and so while that's all all good if you're a diver and you're going down and maybe you're you know coming up from beneath and ramming into whales being an ambush predator that worked perfectly fine for leviathan but coming head to head with megalodon i think it's a disadvantage to be adapted to that dorsal ventral plane and not being able to maneuver in the lateral plane as much so i think that kind of turning on a dime side to side movement that megalodon has is another advantage in terms of mobility and and this battle but it could be an advantage for leviathan if it if it needs to go underneath megalodon so yeah that's true that would be an advantage and i don't know it you can't have like a sperm whale how this would go down like this thing's not going to move like a slinky it's a sperm whale like i don't think it's going to (laughs) just make a u-shape and just curve under and bite its belly ain't no way son sorry (laughs) like well I mean, they they probably were divers to some extent, pretty much all Odonocetes are, and maybe, yeah, it could definitely go and get under Megalodon, but then, you know, it's going to have to come back, back up at some point, and, you know, it has to breathe, and also Megalodon True. could also just kind of that is an, pursue an, it and go go down there. Um, like, so what's it going to do when it's down there? Is it trying to get underneath it so it can come up and ram it? That might work. You know, that's a plausible scenario where Leviathan could win if it, you know, dove down and Megalodon didn't follow it. It just, you know, it's a dumb shark. It's just staying up at the surface. It's like, where'd my opponent go? And then Leviathan comes up and rams it, stunning it, and then could just eat it from there. Um, That's, yeah, that's a scenario where I could see Leviathan winning. But would it really do that in the moment? Or is this just two animals that are just, you know, the only thing on either of their minds, no matter how intelligent, is just I'm trying to kill this other animal right now. And I don't know. It's hard to say. But for me, in most scenarios, if I'm putting these two in a giant tank and having them fight, I think Megalodon's going to win. So for me, at least, I'm going to lock in my vote. I'm going to say Megalodon is the winner. I'm going to agree. agree. I feel like if we're at the point where we're like, oh, well, Leviathan has to do this, 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 and this to have a feasible chance at, you know, successfully beating a Megalodon, I feel like we're trying to, you know, 
I think Michael yeah. Nama is going to win. Yeah. Ben, get That's dunked on. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, so Benjamin. Just, I'm outnumbered. Suck so it, it looks ben. like it looks like Megalodon is our winner of this 24 right. Marine March Madness competition. Who, Dude, I'm going to uh, go on YouTube. I'm going to go on YouTube and find the first video I can that roots for Leviathan in their guess about this and just leave the most insane, furious comments now, now that I'm <laughs> locked and loaded with the facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> yeah. actually, actually yeah. um, how have you know? And if anyone disagrees with our picks for the winner or anything that should have been on this list, let us know in the comments. We would love to hear what you think. I'm still Team Leviden personally, but I, I can definitely see Megalodon having some serious advantages. Yeah. You would have thought I would have been a Leviathan proponent for this one, being that I'm the Cetacean guy. I was hoping guy, you but, would. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not letting my bias overcome here. I, I was going in with a neutral mind, and I, I, you know, I considered everything everyone said. So I, I think Megalodon would, would take this one. Oh. But I appreciate oh. you being uh, being Team Leviathan because, I, you know, I love him. It, that's my stuff. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, to find a Leviathan tooth. Oh, oh, is that a Civil War artillery show? Oh my god! It's a <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Congratulations, Megalodon! Yeah. yeah. Well, if, like, if hey. everybody liked this video, um, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll we'll definitely have to make another one of these fairly soon. This was fun. fun. It's a yes. lot of fun. Yeah, great discussions. Awesome. Are we allowed a little uh, personal plug at the end here? Uh, Subscribe yeah. Subscribe to Hoppy Hunting on YouTube. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Check it out. I make shark tooth. If you want to see us find, you know, see me find some teeth of today's winner, check it out. Hoppy Hunting. H O P P E Hunting on YouTube. Sick. Anyone else have a plug they want. And if you're a yeah. part of either Jared or David's giant fan bases, come to my research. <laughs> mm. like yeah. One person. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, hoping I can snag a few people myself. Yeah. I'm starting YouTube. My YouTube is like way smaller. So it's the same as, uh, same as my Instagram, just J cook paleo cook with any at the end. So J cook paleo. Awesome. Great. Well, it was a great discussion, everyone. Thanks for joining. Indeed.